never stop. There's definitely, there's each relationship you have to dissipate. Their, 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 their best lines are, what do you want out of this relationship? It's a very tough question. Mm -hmm. Not for me. I go, I'm still on the first part. I haven't gotten to that part yet. How do I know what I want out of a relationship? I haven't fucked you yet. Mm -hmm. I, came up, I came up with that yesterday. I was just thinking about what would I say if she asked me? No, yeah, if she, uh, I haven't she gotten to that. Like, um, well, are you in love with me? I said, well, I don't know. I haven't had sex with I'm you. I'm in lust with you. That's good. Yeah. I'd say I never fall in love with a woman until I've had sex I got to tell you something. I said to, and this is the truth. This is how you're going to know if I'm on it, if the guy's honest or not. I told, other than my mother, two women in my life that I loved them and I married both of them. I never would say, I love you and I'm fucking them just because they want to hear it. No. I tell a lot of them, I'm in lust with you. You're hot. Do you love me? Before I come, I could say anything. You want to ask that question 20 minutes from now? It's the truth. You can't, you know, you have to remember the lies. I'm giving you too much to remember. Tell them the truth. Sure, the less you lie, the more, the, no, excuse me, the more you tell the truth, the less you have to remember. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. You don't have to have a rocket science member, memory. And you, you heard me, I don't remember your name, I'm sorry. I never make a date where she's going to be able to say, ah, you were late. Comes to the structure. M.O. If I say to her, let's go out Friday night, she says, what time are you going to be by? I tell her, you know what? I would never insult you by being late, so before I leave the house, I'll give you a call that I'm on my way. I'm never late. They love to say you were late. You have a fucking car accident. What the fuck? You were late. You were late. You don't want to be late. No, I'm not going to be late because I'll call you. And, and not only that, keeps them on their toes. It accomplishes a lot more than the one thing you think it accomplishes. I see they're always thinking about you, waiting for your call. Yeah. I'm so excited to see you tonight that if I gave you a time, I'd kill myself if I wasn't on time. So I'll call you before I leave. Oh, you say stuff like that? Stuff like that, yeah. You want to be romantic. I don't, you know, I, fuck. Uh, listen, I, I got to tell you something. I have a friend, Harvey. He cheats on his wife more than any guy I know. And I have another friend, DJ. And I developed something for these guys because they can't approach women. It's like when I would talk on the phone, convince this girl that I would be Clifford and get her to, you know, I would do something else. <clears throat> They'd go on uh, one of those telephone things and I talked to her for a while and I could make, make up a fantasy and I would tell them, see, I'd live off their fantasy. What's your fantasy like? They tell me their fantasy, mine's almost the same. <laughs> Not close, but my, and I would tell them that I want to come over. If they're the right woman for me, yet adventurous, want, willing to try something really offbeat, lie on your bed. When I ring the doorbell, open the door, leave it open. I want you in the sexiest position with your ass up in the air, and I'll kiss your pussy before I kiss your lips. And I send my friend Harvey over to the house. <laughs> or DJ. They don't know, and they're, and he says to me, she keeps, and she, my friend Harvey's totally bald. He shaves his head. So she says to him when he gets there, and I forgot, she asked me what I look like, and I said, I got brown hair. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I thought you said you had brown hair, and he goes, oh, I'm always been balding. Uh, you know, she's all, he goes, what happened? I go, well, okay, I can't remember all his details. He still fucked her. <laughs> 
would I get naked in bed, leave my door unlocked for some broad to come up and jump on top of me? Never. They do that. <coughs> yeah, that's, you know, I don't even know what the girl looks like and I'm never going to meet her. How many of the women you since you've been so many, if you were to say something like, did you know, that, I mean, I know that every woman has a fantasy of being tied up. How true would that be, did you find you know the kind of thing that you can say that women will go, wow, I tell you know so much about me. And no, who knows see, that just as a guy? You see, it's, it's I, don't, I would never say that. I would say, I would probably say something like this, which I've done before. I go, do you ever think you'd like to tie me to bed and take advantage of me? And they go, yeah. I go, well, I'd never let you do that, but I'm going to do it to you. Uh. <laughs> okay? See, that's the kind of questions I ask. I never, and I would never. I would never, especially after I saw that Seinfeld episode with George. You ever see that one where, where, where he goes in this room with this girl, he, he bought this brand new suit, she thought he was rich because he bought this brand new suit. He, she ties him into the bed, takes, and ha he has no money, so she takes his suit, leaves him tied to the bed. Forget about it. But yeah. Break? Let's go for a little break here. Okay, we'll start with eye contact, as he mentioned first. But eye contact is always very important. You look at them always. Just, you have nothing to fear. You don't want anything from them, unless you do, you want to rape them or you want to steal their money. But you look at them right on the face and you make sure they know where you're looking at. They know. <laughs> you know? I do stuff like that. I mean, I don't care. If they say, what are you looking at? It's boom, perfect. Because then I know they know what I'm looking at, and I know they know, you know, then I, I've gotten my confirmation. That's what I really want. And always, it's always good to, after you've looked at them, and you're, you're intimidating them with your eyes. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to look them square on the face. And as you look at them, smile. It'll bring their smile out. You're leading. You're always, you're always in control. Now, to be in control, you have to have control. To have control, you have to be in control. It's very simple. You have to always be on. Don't be afraid. Like, you see, again, if you're afraid to look at them and you're talking to them and you're looking there and you're looking there and you're looking there, they lose that confidence in you. They lose that security. They, look, they lose that. You know, women have always told me, I feel so safe when I'm with you. <clears throat> look, if I was in that building, in, in the trade towers, and a woman was with me, she would be no safer with me or without me. But it's the, her illusion she's building in her mind. And when she asks me about me, now, remember one thing. If you ask me to give a recommendation on you or you or you or you, well, you've got to take a chance. But if I'm giving a recommendation about myself, I'm going to give the best fucking recommendation I can. He says, what kind of guy are you? I go, I'm fantastic. I'm the greatest guy I know. <laughs> Why not? No, I'm a dumb prick who can't pick up a girl and I feel really down on myself today. Hello? They're going to watch and talk to you again after that? You're giving a recommendation on yourself. Show confidence. Say, yeah. I tell them like this, I think I'm the nicest guy I know. I've evolved into the kind of guy I wanted to be. And I really like myself. If I had a cunt and a dick, I wouldn't need nobody else. What's wrong with that? You have to feel good. And you are the most important person in a relationship. And when you tell them you are, they respect that. 
They all want a guy who is confident, secure in his own masculinity. There's, there's nothing I can think of that I can't use to approach a woman. Let's talk for a while and pretend we're gay because I'm trying to figure out if that woman wants a gay guy or not. <laughs> What's the difference what you say to somebody? It's a facade, it's an act. That's what TV's all about, actors. You're doing, the, you're doing the best thing. Look at the girl, whatever you think. Tell her. The days of a, a girl slapping you and calling the police. You're not into that kind of stuff. You're not gonna say, I would like to kill you and rape you. <laughs> or, yeah, I rape your dead body. <laughs> or, well, should I rape you first, then kill you? I can't decide. I'm out tonight, and I don't want anybody to find out how many I've killed. <laughs> I mean, how, hell, what are you going out for? What is she going out for? You, 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 you tend to lose the, 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 the sight of that, what the relationship's going to be. And I'm not saying that you're not going to find a nice woman in all these women you're trying to pick up. When they ask me if I've had a fantasy, I tell them, yeah, I had this fantasy. I met this woman, I was talking to her in a bar. And to really get to know each other, she suggested we go have sex before we talk it any further. That's a woman I'll probably end up with the rest of my life. And she says to you, let's go. What'd you do? Is a multiple choice? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta think that hard. I'm getting worried now. It's so, obvious. Well, yeah. You'd probably be going like this. Is this a fucking dream? Yeah. Yeah. Best case scenario, you see this. You you leave this room here. There's this beautiful blonde. I don't know what you like. Big tits whatever and she looks at you and she's sexier than hell got a nice mini skirt on with a little slit on the side and says I'm so horny let's go to my room and fuck right now that's your best case scenario everything else is two look for one right Well, a lot of them go, I don't know you yet. And I tell them, what do you think the best way to get to know somebody? You know when you go in a relationship and you really don't know the guy till after you sleep with him? Well, I'm giving you a fabulous opportunity. <laughs> you can get to know me right away. Or, I don't do that on the first date. Oh, I'm glad you told me that because I'm really looking for a spontaneous women with some gumption. Oh, those are your rules. Can you read me the rest of them so I know what I'm against? Whenever they start, I don't have any rules. But no, I don't sleep with a guy the first date. Why not? Is there a set rule here? Well, you know. Well, no, no, what is it? You do or you don't get off the fence. You don't have rules, but you don't sleep with a guy on the first date. That sounds like a rule to me. What do you think? Let's get a jury in. Does that sound like a rule to you? Does it sound like a rule to you? Well, what are the rest of your rules that you don't have? It's like that girl that read me the riot act. Well, I don't like that. 
because she's in control. But no, I knew that that kind of control I could handle. Yeah, exactly. But I knew also that that changes. When she wanted to change the relationship, I told her, hey, see? I agreed to you once. You got one. You don't get two. See, if a guy says to you, do you mind if I do that? What would you say? I'd say, why did you do that? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. If I, and then I do it again. What would you say if I did it again? Stop it? Yeah, stop it. Why the fuck are you doing that? Okay. You set a precedence by letting me do it once and then twice. It doesn't matter what you say. I could do it a third time. When you set a precedence to anything you do, you're agreeing to it. Mm -hmm. I think if a guy goes to do that, you stop him before you. No, you don't do that. Mm -hmm. You don't let him do it once. You don't let her do it once. You stop them right there. Once they set a precedence, you're powerless to change it because you've agreed to it once. Mm -hmm. By agreeing to it once, you kind of let him do it twice and three times. I'm sorry, this is an experiment, okay? You understand? It's the same thing. It's like if you go and you, and you, and you go up to a woman and she says, and you go to touch her and she says, don't touch me. Oh, you don't touch her again. Okay. If she doesn't say anything, you can do it again. No, right? Same thing with anything you do. Once, she sets a precedence. If she makes a rule, and you go in for one of her rules, I don't want a girl that's making all these rules up. You know what? If I say to you, let's go out for dinner, right? and I say, I'm, it's on me, and you sit down, and then you decide, oh, you order the most expensive thing on the menu. Oh, well, you pick at your food and you don't like it. Should I get upset? No. Because you have to know. I decided to take you out for dinner. What you do with that dinner is your problem. You can piss on it for all I care. If I decided to give this to you, it's yours. I don't care. I'm the kind of guy who doesn't care if I buy you a birthday present and you sell it to your friend. I don't give a shit what you did with it. It's your present. There's no strings attached. You give something if you give something from the heart with no strings attached. If I tell you you can have this but I need your firstborn and you take it then you owe me your firstborn. Or you have this but you have to sleep with me tonight. Or you have this and you have to do this for me tonight. So the fair thing is, is for a person to be honest enough and tell you what they expect. I use this example with women. I say, now, what are your rules? What rules do you have for this relationship? And just a second, those are the games they don't play. You see, there's no rules, but they don't tell you what they are and they have a bucket of them. So you're not, you're not dealing with a fair deck of cards here. You think the cards are shuffled. She knows exactly which ones are coming up. How could you play fair? You tell them, hey, before I get into this relation, I want to know what your rules are. If I don't like those rules, I'll play a different game. When you go to Vegas and you go into a casino, there's tons of different games to play. You play the one you want. The one you don't want, you don't play. You choose. Same thing with a relationship. Yeah, meeting girls. Okay, there's good-looking girls. Really great-looking girls. But when you get them in bed, the, the best-looking girls, you know, I had a girl once, she says to me, do me. Yeah. She was the worst in bed, because she lay there like a piece of fucking meat. That's exactly the experience I had, the most beautiful man I ever had. So. Yeah, so she's so good. So what is it? Like I said, after you make your friends jealous and you, you know, big deal. What do you want from that? 
So would you say that of all the women you've met, because you're not the first person experienced with women who said that, that generally the, the, the majority of the super good looking women that you've been with are not necessarily the best in bed? I will tell you that women that think they're gorgeous are the ones who say, do me. Okay. okay. There are some gorgeous women who you can suggest what you'd like to do with them and it turns them on, they become fantastic too. Look, I went out with a girl. All I wanted, to, she had such a gorgeous ass. I said, you know what? I usually don't like anal sex that much, but I want to fuck your ass. She says, no, it hurts. I go, it won't the way I do it. So she goes, well, it's going to go real easy, okay? And when you feel any pain, I'll stop right away. So I go behind her. She's starting to feel a little pain. I rammed it into her. <laughs> and she says, what was that? And I go, I lied. I lied. Once in a while, you got to lie. Oh, whoops. I slipped. Hell, I never said I was an angel. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's the worst thing I've done. Okay, like really to abuse them. So with the example with the pencil on the shoulder there, if um, the person was getting tapped, let's say, go too far, how would, if you were that person, how would you recover? Or is there a way to recover? Don't you don't let it get to recovering. That's what I'm saying no, to you. Stop it right away. Yeah, I know. He yeah. wants to poke me with a pencil. Like, if I'm going to poke him, he should. Yeah, stop it. No. Yeah. Don't poke me. I'm not pokeable. You had an oversight in the beginning. Or... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you say to him, you, you, you don't make it an oversight. You say, again. you got through without me realizing. Don't do that again. Okay. okay. Yeah. okay? You don't, it's not an oversight. Yeah. Okay. He, if he's being polite and letting me, no, no, just saying, letting me do it the first time because he's being, thinks he's being nice. He's not. He's being nice to me. No, he's, he's, he's letting me take advantage of him. He's not being nice. You understand? By going once and then, and then he says, look, I really don't like that. You're, you're not being nice because I've already abused you. You understand? Mm -hmm. When I go to do it, like when, here, like when you stop me, okay? Stop. No, I don't want it done. That's it. You should stop. You have to respect. You know, like, the, like they say, when a woman says, stop, no, it's no. You have to have that ability to break, the braking power. You've got to have four-wheel discs mm -hmm. in all situations. You know, I told her, I talked to a woman, she was driving me crazy, all kinds of stupid nonsense, where I have no gains, but I can't do this the first night, and I got, I got like, I says, you know what, this conversation is over. I walked away. And she, she, all night she'd come after me. Yeah. Why is it over when you say it's over? <laughs> because it is. I didn't answer her. Okay. I do what they do. You know when, they, when you say they don't answer you and walk away? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have no respect for her. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk to her anymore. It's over. Because when the conversation you have with them is over, most of the time they insult you. They turn away, they don't answer you. They're not nice. They're not nice about it. Like saying, you're not the kind of guy I really would go after. Uh, maybe there's another girl here that you'd like. Or, you know, being honest. They play games with you. Meet me. I'm here with, four, with ten girls at a restaurant. Come on down. It's not a nice thing to do. Make you go down wherever. Who knows how far away he was. Or, actually, I know how far away he was. That was a really prick thing to do. New town to my place. Yeah, it's a, it's a hell of a trek as a joke on somebody. It's like sending a, a pizza up to somebody's house, you know? And not picking up the phone when I call them. You know, n not answering the phone. Listen, I don't like to give them my number. So they beg me for it. And then I tell them I don't like to give my number out because there's too many Klingon women out there. See, I tell them why I don't want to give them my number, and that makes them become more subservient. If I do give them my number, they will only call me on the times I let them call me. 
you have to have every aspect under control you have to be relentless you can't say okay I'll be go easy because I there's a big problem with somebody I think he's in this room I don't want to mention his name again and he gives in he gets subservient with the relationship he starts to figure out oh, you know they're they're nice and I'm gonna be nicer to them and then they start abusing him right away doesn't take long hey right? <laughs> but the idea is we don't want to be abused you wouldn't do it back the same way women always say you'll get this I don't want to be taken for granted if you hear that come out of their mouth you know you know that they will take you for granted as soon as they say to you I don't want to be taken for granted they will take you for granted <coughs> and depends how hard-assed the, the woman is I, I come up with a with a very logical with very logical comparisons for them and I tell them like well, I'm not gonna pick on you anymore how old are you? 20. 20. It's a little harder at 20. Because you'll get you'll understand a bit. How old are you? 40. 40. 30, 40, it's a little easier for what I'm gonna tell you. You you you're gonna have a tougher time with this situation. But you can work on it too, because even girls from the first day they start dating. And what I usually say to them is like this: look, men and women. When they start out, they start out with a slate with, let's say, 500 points in it. They go into one or two relationships, a boyfriend treats them bad, they lose some points. By the time, I'm going to make an example, by the time you're 40 years old, you've had a couple of good, bad relationships, you've got six points left, or you've got minus 12. And here you meet a woman with minus 25. She's been married and divorced, and the guy treated her really badly or abused her. So what happens? they don't have a free slate for you they got rules and they've got conditions and you have to follow you have to pay for all the other guys crimes ahead of you so we're not starting on a clean slate and I don't know if there's a woman that can start on a clean slate and I was told by a woman once that I wasn't giving her a fair shake because I didn't start on a clean slate see I say that mm -hmm. I said but I don't know any women who can start on a clean slate and that's the way we should start to give each other a chance and then when she says well I don't do this on the first night I go see you didn't clean that slate ah that's good you have to be smart you prepare everything what's the three most important things in a relationship you go honesty trust and respect you ask them that question when they come back uh, respect love you go no you're almost right or you got one right right away you correct them you're the teacher you're leading you correct them and I've even gotten honesty trust and respect and I get up and I go wow bravo you're the first one I might have to sleep with you tonight come up with a joke but that's it you tell them you leading you correct them they want to feel good with you they want to feel secure with you so you remember going back to basics men are closer to their mothers and girls are closer to their fathers changes at certain ages but that's it we're very protective of our daughters we're, we're, we're brought up by our mothers it's a bad mix we're very soft on the inside we love that motherly love but a woman was taken care of by her daddy the strength her father see we have parents but you have to see who daddy's little girl can do no harm a 
for sure if you have two kids a, a boy and a girl and your son comes home and says boy dad I just got laid she was beautiful oh you feel great and your daughter comes home and says dad these two guys they fucked my ass and they cut <laughs> so hard it felt so good yeah tell tell me how which one you're gonna be able to handle <laughs> I told my wife I'm so happy to have a daughter some sleaze bag like me comes to the door, I'd be shitting my pants. <laughs> but that's the reality of it. That's, that's, that's when you start to realize those things right there. You start to realize what you've got to set yourself, your goal. Any other questions here that you need answered? Um, well, my question is just I want you to, uh, what do you do in case of this scenario that, that I'm facing maybe a video? Are you listening to the girl again? Is this the first thing that I'm going to have to say to you? You're listening to her? Okay, let's go. I said it first. Let me hear the question now. Okay. It's, uh, that is in the metro, for example, when you see the guy, for example, uh, where you change eye contact, well, I want to know how for example, for you, how you, how you initiate the contact first? Eye contact? No, 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 no. I, I have already the, the eye contact. I want to know. Uh, how do you open the eye contact? Well, it depends. Okay. You, you, where did you have... Okay, give me a scenario. Metro. In the metro? Yeah, in the metro. Okay, yeah. you're in the metro. You're on a metro car or are you in the platform? What? No, in the, in the car. In the car? Uh, on the platform. The wagon. In the, no, in the car. See, yes, wait, in, the, in the but on the platform in the car, it's important. She's only the in the car. Yeah, yeah, in the car. In the car. Okay, because I have a great line for the platform. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll give you both of them, but yeah. okay. which one you want first? Uh, what? In the car. That's it. That's the one. On the track. On the track. No, I would. On the platform, I I see an eye contact or girl. Okay. I would go. Don't take your eyes off me. Make sure I don't fall into that train. Okay. And in the in in the car, if you have the eye contact, it depends. What do you see? What? What? Okay. Let me ask you this question. Just as what? What's your perfect woman? What kind of woman do you like? Big boobs, small boobs, blonde, brown, red. Okay, you like big boobs, slim, fat, chunky. What? Slim. Slim. Big boobs. Slim. What color hair? Black. Black hair. Sexy. What's she wearing? Tell me what she's wearing. <laughs> well, I gotta know. You know, you're telling, you're asking me, what do you, how do you contact a woman? I gotta know which woman. What? Any kind of woman? I. <laughs> <laughs> you're interested. You need to know. Okay, let's see. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, let's see. For example, skirt. Why she's wearing a skirt? She's wearing a skirt. Okay. Tall, short. Nice legs, long legs, sexy, high heels, sneakers. What? I gotta know. No, okay, short. Uh, short. Yeah. Starting to look worse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I might let her. I, I might let you get her. What's your best feature? What's, what's oh, your best you tell feature? me what you like. You know, I gotta know what you like. You ask me how to approach from eye contact. What about her turns you on? You know, you're asking me. Okay. Uh, you, you wanna, let, let, let me explain something to you. Okay, here. Sorry. Uh, I hope you know, can understand this. I have eye contact with him. How am I going to approach him? I'm not. I don't want to fuck him. <laughs> okay? What turns me on about him? Zero. I'm going to make, I'm, I'm going to punish myself because I'm looking at him. I should be looking at abroad. Okay? No, it doesn't work. What? What? You know? What scenario? What does she look like? You got to know. You're telling me a, a girl. What kind of girl? There's, there's some females I wouldn't fuck with your dick. <laughs> you know? So you got to tell me what you, what, what, what's nice about it. I'm asking you, what do you like? Now I want to tell you something. I see a girl about 5'7". It's a little, you know, 5'7", on high heels, so she's even a little taller than me when in her heels. And she's got medium blonde hair, a real cute smile, okay? Perky tits with a really sharp ass wearing hot pants. You know what I think of? First of all, you ain't getting there. I am. Second of all, I go, ooh, 
I like those hot pants. Are they supposed to make me hot or you hot? Ooh, yeah. Depends what you see in her. Exactly. I can't tell me what she's wearing. I gotta know what she's wearing. Why'd I look at her? She's a fucking cleaning lady, bag lady. I ain't looking at her. I don't want to approach her. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're asking me questions, a girl. It's, you know what that's like saying? Okay, well, go I'm get, go to the butcher okay. shop, buy a piece of liver, cut a slit in it, and put a picture from a Playboy magazine, and fuck it all you want. If it's too cold, put it in the microwave for a while. <laughs> the fuck you want? What turns you on about her? You know what I mean? Hello. I have to know. I mean, you, 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 you know, it, it's, I, I'm not trying to be, make a joke here, be sarcastic, but no, no, really, no, 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 no. you're asking me what? I want to know what about her turns you on. Listen, I guarantee all you guys are turned on differently by different women. Not, that's why there's so many out there. There's some, the one downstairs that I said she was really hot there, I thought she was great. I would have done her right there on the fucking floor in front of anybody. <coughs> Maybe you wouldn't. I'm not saying you don't have good taste or bad taste. Everybody's different. I tell somebody that I think that chick's real cute. I had a friend, I, I remember we went to Florida, and he was the kind of guy, real good looking guy. But he also had a problem approaching women. We're standing in uh, Morrison's cafeteria. It's, uh, it's um, I don't know, who's, who's from Florida here? Who was, who's been in Florida? It was. Uh, cafeteria kind of place that you go there you know the, the, everybody the, there's a there's a special for the older people like uh, what are they early bird specials you know and you go there with your tray and you choose the food you want and standing in front of us was this really cute little girl there and I was with my friend and he looks at her and she looks at him and he looks at her and she looks at him and I'm going Jeff you like her? He says yeah she's cute they go yes go talk to her he goes oh I don't know I walk over to her and I go Excuse me, my name's Dave. I have to tell you something. It's very important you know this. My friend Jeff over there is freaking out over you. He's so cute. And, I, and he won't introduce himself to anybody unless somebody knows her first. Oh. So I want you to come over with me. I want you to meet my friend Jeff. That's great. He lived with her for a week in Florida after that. But I approached her. It depends what you like. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have gone after her. I was looking at her in line too. I looked at her once, not my type. I like this other girl that was over there and I didn't get her. You, I, you know, you, you can't be 100%. Maybe she was on a different agenda. Maybe after she had supper, she had to go to a boyfriend's house. Maybe she's a drug lord and had to go buy drugs. I don't know. You can't do everybody. But it's who you approach. Maybe if I would approach this one, she would have gone with me. But I liked the other girl, and I knew he liked her. And I have a rule. I won't fight over this with any guy. Yeah, that's really it's not worth it. There's so much of it out there. If you want her, go. But you have to know what you like. You're asking me, how do you meet a girl in the metro? I, what, what, uh, well, a metro well, shouldn't be any different. Well, 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 the question might be, I will phrase it in a way. Okay. Do you, but, but let's say, do you stand up and you go in front of people and you tell her what do you want to tell or... Uh, always. I was always thinking until she gets up in the next stop. And I no, I don't wait for, I don't, I don't have it. You see, I, I, if, if we have eye contact, I'm, I'm talking to her right away yeah, after. If she doesn't notice I'm there, I will sometimes make contact or even go up to her she's got a walkman on her head or something like that yeah if she's got a walkman on her head i'll usually go up there like this <laughs> <laughs> i go that gets everybody to take that walkman off every time i do that okay just get her attention you got to be innovative understand in a metro you see to me I, when, when you ask me, what if you meet her in a metro on a platform, let's make a difference. Use the props that are there to guide yourself on how to get her. I had an example in the, this is a real, happened last year in the bus, speaking of public transportation. Um, sitting, you know those, the benches at the end, the, the sideways benches? Opposite me were two Russian girls, 
one Russian guy and another guy who from another country, I don't know. So the, the three of them, the Russians were speaking Russian with each other. Whenever they spoke to the other guy, they used English because that's a common language. And then one of the girls started eye contacting me. So I looked back at her and I, um, at the time I didn't know what I was doing, but I just held it for about five seconds. But then I, in my mind, I, I thought, this is probably not a good idea. It's rude to just keep staring like that. Oh, you were thinking that? Or you thought she was thinking that? You yeah, thought she might, she might think it. Yeah, yeah, yeah ex excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me, let me just stop you right now. I'm worried about what you're thinking again. Uh, isn't that rule number one again? Yeah, well, I didn't know it at the time. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you're thinking of what yeah. she's thinking. Yeah. So I did the worst thing, I looked down. Uh, That's the worst way of place to look. I mean, look away if you want to break eye contact, but not down. You talk Russian? Is that Russian I hear? Because sometimes I try that all the time, try to recognize the language I hear. Yeah, that's a good way to approach it. Is that, yeah. I, I, Clifford was a witness to that one once, eh, Cliff? Is that, is that, what language was that? The sexiest girls I've met come from that country. Are you from that country? Uh. Russia? Wow. <laughs> I speak every language but Greek. Ask me something in any language. Yeah, I don't, um... Any language at all. Oh, want me to ask you something? Yeah, I mean, that's Greek to me. That's Greek. That's great because it gets a laugh. I speak every language, but only half. I don't. You see, I don't. I don't care what they say or think. I'm driving. Wow. Yeah. You keep, you know, every time you come up with a question, you guys, I'm telling you, it comes back to what they're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. If I would have come in here at the beginning and say, okay, guys, there's two rules to my method, and that's, who gives a fuck what they think? Okay, and you're number one. Then you go, what the fuck's he talking about? But although it sounds silly, and I'm not trying to say to, to, to talk against women. If I was talking to women right now, I'd say to them, hey, how to deal with men? Who gives a fuck what they think? They only think of one thing. Sex. Isn't that what you tell them? Yeah. What would they, anybody here tell them different? What are you thinking of? What are they thinking of? You know what the weird thing is? We crawl down this once in our life, and the rest of our life we try to crawl back up. <laughs> and that's what, you, that's what you tell a woman. If you want a good relationship, the relationship has to work, has to go past things. And you know what I tell them? Sex is, to me, a very, very important and serious part of a relationship. More important than if you like popcorn at the movie theater. What do you think? Uh -huh. I couldn't go out with a girl who didn't like popcorn. <clears throat> I love meat. My wife's a vegetarian. The only thing I care about is she has to only like one piece of meat in her mouth. And as long as she likes that, I don't give a fuck what she eats. It's her mouth and her body. There are a lot of guys, I've heard this lots of times. Oh, I went out with so-and-so last night and she ordered the most expensive thing on the menu and you, or she picked her food. And it's again. You have to live it. What are the rules? What are the conditions? You can tell them and you can ask them. She can say, can you take me out for dinner? Say, I can't take you out for dinner. I have a rule. They only take out girls for dinner after I slept with them. Yeah, that's so good. You've actually said that. Yeah. It cost a lot to take them out and spend money on them and find out. And a lot of you guys are in limited funds. You're not doing your relationship fair if you throw away money and you can't afford it and you have a miserable time. And then you, and then she call, then you call her up to take her out again. Now you don't know it's going to cost me more money for nothing. You've gone through those thoughts. Not everybody's rich. And, and if you're rich and she takes you for an expensive meal and you don't get anything out of it, you feel taken, you know, no, no, no. You want to, listen, this is the way it works. I sleep with you, I take you out for dinner. Next time you cook for me. It's the way it works. You don't like that? Okay, cook me up first. 
then well, you'll sleep with me, you'll cook for me, then I'll take you out for dinner. I can go, I can change it that way. <laughs> well, what do you want from a relationship? What are you looking for? You want a relationship you're not going to be happy in? You want a relationship you're going to only have sex when she wants? I'm laughing because you're already in big trouble even thinking that line. How many times you hear songs and the women use sex as a weapon? And it's a very good weapon. Excellent controller. <coughs> Any other questions here? Question regarding uh, approaching women. Usually, I've uh, noticed that complimenting them is a really nice way to approach them on what you observe and what you really like about them. Yes. And then proceeding with the structure. Usually, I've always tried to uh, stop to them for a few minutes, and then I'm usually doing something at the moment, so I get them get their number or whatever and leave. But uh, are there any other uh, ways you can do things? What, what do you recommend? You know, you remember what they say, okay? There's another set of rules here that take into play, but you see, you guys, I don't think you're ready for those rules yet. And that is, and you've heard this before, I will bet every one of you, whoever hasn't heard this before will please raise their hand. Treat a lady like a whore and a whore like a lady. Who has never heard that before? You never heard that before? Memorize it. Important. Very important. Treat a lady like a whore and a whore like a lady. Because that's reality. Okay? You're young and you haven't heard that before. Let me tell you now, you'll hear it again. And it's very, very true and very, very profound. Those girls, I remember I went out with a girl, this client of mine comes in and tells me that he has a cousin who passed away, very wealthy guy, and he had a daughter. Her name was Iona. And her last name fit her very well. She's a, from a very wealthy family. And he wanted me to take her out. And I never wanted to take out anybody in my family or any of my clients' family because I don't need the hassle. If I don't like her, if I do like her, I don't want to, you know, I want to keep my private life away from my business life. But he pestered me and pestered me and he made me take her out. And she wouldn't leave me alone. She was the ultimate, consummate Klingon. She used to call me up and have these sex conversations with me on the phone about that she, and, and I found out she went to these places in New York, like Plato's Retreat. She was the sluttiest broad I've ever seen in my life. Okay? She was like the worst. She's the kind of girl you call a porcupine. She had as many pricks on her as she's had in her, she'd look like a porcupine. <laughs> And she was so bad, so gross. I taped her conversation. I should actually try to find the tape and put it into this thing too, but it was incredible. You wouldn't believe it. And you look at her and you talk to her and you think, oh, this is a real lady. And then I used to pick up dancers, strippers. They were the easiest to pick up. What is your structure for that? Treat them like a lady, not That's like a stripper. That's very true. So simple. Nobody, they all, everybody treats them like a whore. They're naked, they're in front of you. The last thing you're going to say, I would say to her, I'd really like to take you out with my two kids on a picnic. In those days, I never had kids. Right away, picnic, kids. I call her, let's go on the picnic. Where are your kids? Did I say I have kids? I said, I would take your kids on a picnic. I'll go out with you on a picnic with your two kids. <laughs> so yeah, I'm guilty of manipulation. 
How did you figure these things out? Did you just try a lot of different things? Sure. It, it's easy. I, you see, again, I didn't care what they think. It's easy to try stuff. Most of it works the first time. Because you got nothing to lose. You guys already think it's gone. Now you're shooting at the stars. You'd be surprised by impressing them how intelligent you are, or how open you are, how honest you are, is refreshing. They've heard all those lines. I mean, I, can, I hear those conventional lines like I'm telling you. I love to go, when I go out of town, I'm in the, I make sure, I don't, I don't drink anymore, so I go into the bar just to sit at the bar, near all the people trying to pick everybody up, and I love hearing those lines. I mean, it's like watching TV. I look at the, I, got, I, 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 went, I went to Toronto with my friend and we stopped by at, uh, uh, we ate at Kelsey's, and there's a one in Mississauga there. And we went to ask them where a nice bar was in the area and told us there's one with a lot of students around. I listened to those lines, bless their hearts. It was, I was like peeing myself laughing. You know, you could see the lines that come, they come up with. Like I've heard them a gazillion times. And, and when they leave, you can hear the girls saying, boy, another loser, you know? And one of them says, well, I'm going to play with them for a while because I want another drink. I mean, you hear stuff like that all the time. When you come up with the stuff I give them, they forget all that. Wow, who is this guy? I mean, I, I never like to tell them what I did for a living until I decide if I'm going to sleep with them. I tell them you'll only find out about me tomorrow, if after breakfast. And if they push me and push me, what do you do for a living? I, I tell them, I repair disposable cigarette lighters. I repair disposable, I repair disposable cigarette lighters. You'd be surprised how many believe that. <laughs> but yeah, that's the reality. And what, what was one of my, uh, ask Clifford, he's heard that line many years ago. I had a girl say to me, I swear to you, I, and I just threw out one yesterday. Shit. <laughs> I thought, I sat down one day and I thought, what could be the most useless profession on this planet? <laughs> and I, yeah, let's try that one. And you'd be surprised how many believed it. Where do you do that? Oh, I have a little shop on St. Catherine Street. <laughs> Business good? Yeah, yeah, I can afford a shop on St. Catherine Street repairing dollar cigarette lighters. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many things women tell you guys that you don't really hear everything or, or you believe. Like, for instance, I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable. Like, I'm waiting there with 10 of my gorgeous girlfriends come down right now. I mean, that's, that's, is, is it not as bad as what I'm doing, or worse? It's a weird thing for her. No, I, it's I no, it's even worse because if I tell you the pair of disposable cigarette lighters, I'm not asking you to invest in my company. Yeah, exactly. I'm telling you, shut up. I don't want to tell you what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they're making you go halfway around the city on a wild goose chase. So it all depends what you want. If you keep your relationship honest and straight, you have no problem. If they start playing games with you, play their, play their games back. Ask them, when you ask, when you ask them a question, they give you an answer with a question, ask them a question. Even if you can't think of one, go, why did you ask me that? That's the best one. If you can't think of a question to ask her back right away, Come back with the one that's, it's, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a spare, you know? You keep it in your back pocket. Why'd you ask me that? And then try to think of another answer because she's going to say, why do you say that? You go, why do you say that? You know? <laughs> you know? And if she starts laughing, say, come on. I go, come on. Go, I asked you a question, you asked me a question back. Try to bring it back. Keep it in, in the same basic, hey, 
You didn't answer mine, I ain't answering yours. We talked about honesty, trust, and respect, and you're the first one to, to, to start a problem. I use that. That is probably my biggest weapon. Because once I tell them honesty, trust, and respect, I want to catch them lying to me. Okay. And I put them on the carpet every time they're fucking around with me. Every time they tell me, oh, I don't play games, but I don't do that on the first date. Next. Okay. You understand? Right. And, I, and I tell them. And if I do, if I catch him two, three times, I usually go over, if it's a bar, I go, uh, give me a piece of paper, bartender. Okay, I just want to put a record here. Uh, Debbie and uh, Dave. Okay, three for Debbie and zero for Dave. Okay, let's go. Next. Mm. Uh, just keep this and, you know, you, you, you can keep a count. Because they all expect you to be the liar. It's always the guy that lies to them. It's always the guy that plays games. It's always the guy that's not doing this. It's always the guy that's not doing that. It's usually not. But you see, they start with one thing in their mind that you guys don't have. Well, you guys do have, but don't have. One is that you're feeling guilty before you met them. They don't feel guilty before they met you. So they know already, they have a thing in their pocket, they have an ace in their pocket. You already feel guilty, no problem, I know how to use that against them right away. When they say, all guys lie, well, you go, I don't, you defend it. I don't defend it, I go, you haven't found an honest guy yet. Luckily, I'm here. <laughs> or you can quote Chris Rock. You gotta, you can't skirt the issue and walk through you got to confront it stop it right there and then the same thing with the pencil same thing with the poke or whatever no 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 I don't I resent that I'm not dishonest I can't women use that as a, as a weapon as a line because most men have those guilts that they get from their mothers And they're a woman, and you already have the guilt before you met her. You, that's you, 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 all you guys are guilty of that already. What? Guilty of what? You should be all electrocuted because you're nice guys? Because you're sensitive? Did you know there's a book published by a woman, and the title is How to Date a Nice Guy? If you want, buy a copy or find out the publisher and all the information and give it to the, print it on some cards and give it to the girl says, you want a good experiment? Go get this book and read it and give her the title and everything on a piece of paper. She'll be impressed. How to date a nice guy. You definitely know how to date creeps because you wouldn't be here and meeting me if you didn't have that experience. <laughs> and this is all stuff that they say. I'm throwing it back at them. It's your best weapon. Don't skirt the issue. Don't be afraid to confront it. You'll find you'll be smart enough to stop everything. So when you ask them, um, what is it they Sorry, do on the first date, or what their rules are, the ultimate goal, I'm just uh, I'm assuming, this is something I'm making, that it's because at some point you're going to get into the conversation about the points and how we all start off with points, and then we get um, in, a, in a state where our slate is just not clean. Depending now, I have to tell you, depending on how you handle that. In other words, if you find that it's better to start saying, you know, when I meet somebody like you and you give her the whole story on points and, and then you say, by the way, what are your rules? If she goes, you have none, say, I don't believe that. Because I'll ask you a few things and you'll, t and you'll see and she'll go, try me. And you'll go, I will soon. And you talk about other things, ask her what vegetable or fruit she likes. Mm -hmm. Then you bring back and say, would you go home with somebody on the first date? And she'll go, no. So you see, we were talking a few minutes ago. You do have rules. Okay. And I said, I love to do that because okay. I, it's called entrapment. 
Okay. And it works. Okay. okay? I'll bring them... I'll, I'll, you see, I, like I said, I bring them into thinking the way I want them to think. You know, when I meet somebody like you and uh, it's not our first time round, and it's a, it's a problem because two people, when they meet each other, have this slate and the slate isn't clean. You know, give them that whole spiel there and then uh, trust, honesty and respect and then I try to change the subject. I get them off guard. I do that, it's definitely manipulation, I do that to stay in control. Then I bring them in later on and go, by the way, would you sleep with somebody on the first date? And they go, no. So you do have rules. What is, what are your rules? Most of the women, when you ask them that question, they say, oh no, I don't have any rules. Is that what you're saying? Most of yeah. That's why it's easy to get them that trust. <laughs> exactly, because I know they're all going to say they don't have any rules. And if the ones, if ones say they have rules, say, I'd like to know them, please. You need to know the rules. When you come into a, when you come into a city, you should find out the rules of the road. Montreal <coughs> has no rights on red. You get a ticket after you know that because you turned right on red. It's not Montreal's fault. It's your fault. You should have remembered or whatever. They're going to change it in a year, it's wait for another year. You know the rules. You meet a girl, I've had my cunt sewn up and I really can't fuck. Thank you for telling me goodbye, you know. You'd want to know that, right? I mean, isn't that fair? Oh, I've had a sex change operation, I used to be a man. Thank you very much. Right? You, you have the right to know these things. I have AIDS, I have herpes, it's the same kind of things. I don't think I want to get into a relationship with what I'm not looking for. I'm not a charity case, and I'm not looking to, 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 to be um, a pioneer in that, re in that area. You want to know what the rules are. There's nothing wrong with that. If you find that there's something wrong with that, if they find that there's something wrong with that, well, go on to the next one. I'm not saying there's... Look, there's, there's plenty of girls that I started with who I was working into a very good... And something they said turned me off completely. I don't want to pursue that. If that happens, okay, I know where else to go. Oh, this is an incredible story, but true. Talk to this girl on the phone. My friend tells me she's a dis dispatcher for a trucking company. And he was down there at this trucking company. She's really hot looking. So I said, give me your number. That's all I need. Start talking to her on the phone, yada, yada, yada. We get in all kinds of sex conversations. Get in those conversations, she's playing with herself on the phone and having an orgasm. And I go over to her house. And it's one of these places, I don't know, you'd have to know Montreal, it's in Lachine, where it's like four steps up to the first level. You walk in, there's another step up, and then her balcony in the back is almost ground level, but it's up uh, almost, not a full story. I walk into the apartment, and it's dark in there, red, nice curtain. I see the curtains open at like the patio doors or something, where the balcony is. And I hear click. I turn around, she's behind me. She's wearing leather bikini underwear with a mask on with a fucking cat of nine tails whip. So I look at her and I go, very nice. I approve. I figure, you know, she's, she goes, I'm a dominatrix and I want a submissive. So I said, eh, wrong guy. So she starts to flick the whip at me. So I tell her, don't do that again. So she does it again, I grab the whip, and I throw it to the ground. I said, I want to leave. I go to the fucking door, it's locked. Oh boy. Now, I'm not a small guy, and I can handle myself pretty well, but I don't want to fucking even get to hurting the woman to get out of her place, because I mean, how many Probably. police are gonna believe that she wanted to <laughs> yeah, yeah. entrap you? I don't want to get, I don't want to be there to have that kind of conversation. So I go out to her balcony and I take a jump down, almost break my legs, this is years ago. 
but they could jump down, run to the front, get in the car, and drive away from there. Now, for sure, I could have fucked her. I don't know what would have happened, but you see, my instinct for survival was I have so many others. Yeah, don't, don't, don't. This looks like trouble to me. Get the fuck out of there. Yeah, I had the same thing happen yesterday. You know, there's, there's tons of crazies out there. I'm not saying you're not going to encounter crazy women. There's crazy guys, there's crazy everything. I mean, I can't believe they haven't found one woman yet that's killed 30 different guys or kids or something like that. There's got to be as many crazy guys out there. There's got to be women that are doing the same kind of thing. It's harder to find, I guess. But you have to be careful. Every relationship. I was in Dallas. I put that ad in the paper. I got sent things all the time. They sent me, those women sent me pictures. I have to bring that file to Clifford and show them. And I'll never forget, I go into the house in Dallas, and in Dallas, a lot of people like to drink iced tea out of old jars. <coughs> hey, you guys have seen that before? They're, yeah, they're, they're like, they're jar, you know, like uh, per, uh, preserved jars. Some of them have handles on them. It's a jar. It's, you can, what, what are they called? So I get to her house. She tells me she lives with her son who's on disability. I go in a room and meet him. He's in one of these hospital beds all laid up. So I sit down in the living room. She's making me supper. She takes out these tray tables, puts this jar in front of me like this. And I look at it. It looks like I'm the seventh person to use it before they clean it. <laughs> I'm going, gross. On a tray table that was never been wiped down from the time they ate on it the last time. And she must have sent me a picture that she took 20 years earlier. Oh, no. So I tell her, I think I'd like to go home. And she's there, and in Dallas, these women have guns everywhere. Everybody's got guns, you know? So I tell her, I want to get out of there. I go to the door, it's fucking locked. Oh, one of those, uh I tried, cha yeah, I tr tried chasing all around the house. It's key locked, and the door's got two thin panes of glass in it with that Ripley glass. You know, you can't get through it. Oh, fuck. I told her, I said, listen, I, I'm, I want out. I ended up throwing a big chair through her living room window, the front window, and running out of the house. I cut my, my leg up and my arm up on the glass shards and I took off. There's crazy people out there. <clears throat> you, you don't know what you come in contact with. I was afraid to drink and, and she kept begging me to take a drink, to take a drink. And I said, for sure I ain't touching anything in this place, you know. Maybe that guy in bed wasn't their son. <laughs> Hello, you know, you got to be careful. And I'm not the kind of guy that most people will mess with. You know, but they try anyway. You got to be careful with stuff like that. So, yeah, you got to be discreet. You got to take it easy. You don't know what you're dealing with. When you said, like, you mentioned before, dominatrix. I've played stuff like that with a bunch of people. We had, like, a orgy kind of thing, and we took turns doing that, you know, and yeah, it's fun. It's, all that stuff's fun. <clears throat> but all depends on the circumstances. These are people you knew. There's a certain trust already. Yeah. I usually come out on top There's a friend that I have that Clifford introduced me to many years ago. And this guy got into the, the, the situation where he only wanted to go into um, masochism, you know, domination and submissive and all this kind of thing. And one day I went with him. We were having a party. And 
he started slapping around this girl. Her ass got so red, and I could understand that that's in, that's in the game. And then he started slapping her face and started punching her in the face. And I, I stopped and I said, stop, let me leave. Let me out of here, okay? I mean, I've seen things, you can give a guy a punch and you can paralyze him for life. You can give a thousand punches and not, not even scratch the guy. Play is play and sometimes things get out of hand. From the best intentions. You got only your own ass to protect. Don't go there if you don't want to take a chance and deal with it later on. You know, like they say, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. You have to know what you want and don't go to situation if you're adventurous you want to try different things okay but remember risks. understand the risk understand the risk that's also in a lot of advanced stuff you guys are getting late all the time and you start meeting girls like that we have a different kind of session for you <laughs> it's called survival <laughs> <laughs> Okay, going back to, let's see, have we answered everybody's questions or anybody's got a question they need answered? You? Yeah, could you elaborate on the silicon entrapment thing? That was probably pretty powerful, entrapment of getting that to you. The entrapment, I, I call it entrapment, but it's, you see, it's not the kind of entrapment that I would say is like illegal. No, it's usually getting them to admit to what they lie about the most fiercely. Do you do that throughout the relationship? I, I'm relentless. When I read them my riot act and I give them my rules, that's my Bible. When I tell them honesty, trust, and respect, the minute they're out of line once, they know about it. And I also tell them I give you enough rope to hang yourself, I give you three strikes. Don't look for four. It don't exist. I tell them that. <coughs> Why not? I won't be there for the fourth time they try to pull something on me. Before. The fourth time, I usually tell them, is the first time for another girl. If by three dates she doesn't know if she wants to sleep with you, she ain't going to know after 33 dates. Why waste your time? And yes, the entrapment's always there. I tell them the rules. I tell them you, you don't play games because they'll, you know, you tell them what you want in a I want a relationship where I don't play games, honest, open, spontaneous. I don't mind to live out your fantasy if you're willing to live out my fantasy. I tell a girl, you like oral sex, and she goes no and say, it's too bad because I give better head than you'll ever imagine. But if she won't give me head, why should I give her head? I won't go through a relationship for where do me do me and, and, and let her lie there she's got to work for it I tell her I know I'm fantastic in bed I just want to make sure you deserve it and I guarantee any one of you guys are alone with a good looking broad and if I tell you it doesn't matter how many times you blow your load just keep going You'll be good too. I have confidence. <laughs> and it's, it's with a woman, remember, the facade and the fantasy that she's living when she meets you and feeling about you, if she feels these things about you, the secure, <clears throat> the comfortable, the respectful of you, she'll build up a fantasy in her own mind and she'll have an orgasm maybe not the first time but for sure the second time because they're fantasizing they fantasize a lot more than men do so they fantasize you see we're, we're we fantasize like a fast porno yeah. we fantasize we want to fuck them and get out of there they want the story you know those pornos you guys watch and they fucking like they, they only fuck four times in the whole porno you're watching for an hour and you're end up if you if you it's a, it's a tape you're going shh 
fast forward fast to the fucking part. Yep, yep, yep. Saturday Night Blue, New Year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't do that. They want to watch the whole movie. You see, you want to fast forward to the fucking? They want to watch the whole movie. So in their mind, they're not fast forwarding. Do you, and, and, and don't tend to forget that. That's a very key point. They're not fast forward. They're not doing that. They're watching those terrible acting. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jim wants to sleep with me. Huh? <laughs> I mean, you, you, you're going, I don't care what she says. I don't even want to hear her voice. Get okay. naked. Okay? And these, but girls want to see the whole movie. So you should go and look, look up these porn movies that are suited more for women and see what they like to watch. And a good homework for all you guys, I want you to rent, watch whatever you can on a very uh, like a recent movie with Mel Gibson, oh, yeah. What Women Want. That'll teach you a lot on the differences. It's a good movie yeah. because during watching that movie, I called Clifford, watch this part, you dumb fuck. Watch this part, you dumb fuck. You understand? I kept calling him. I <laughs> make him watch that whole movie, you know? And you guys all need to watch that movie. It's very important. It'll give you a rough idea on what you're doing. Not wrong, but what you're doing and what you're not realizing. It's a, it's, it's a, it gives you, a, there's a couple of other movies like Don that. Juan DeMarco is a good one. Marlon Brando joining Depp. I've seen parts of that. I haven't seen the whole movie, but I, this movie with Mel Gibson, I liked it. Yeah. How about Swingers? I haven't seen it, so I don't know. I, there's, there's a lot, but I, I, this one is particularly good, by the way. It's a, like, I'd say, <clears throat> it's a good example for you young guys, okay? 20 years old, I'm not trying to put you down because you're young. You're at the stage of your life. When I was 20, <sighs> so I, I was already fucking for a while, but when I was 20, I was like a bloodhound. Pussy, pussy, <laughs> pussy, 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 pussy. I was just, I couldn't, that's all I thought about. Thought, I couldn't think of anything else. There was not, I didn't think about food, <laughs> pussy. That's all I thought about. I finished work. Work was so I could have enough money to go after pussy. Sleep was so I could be not tired tomorrow to go after pussy. That's all my life revolved around was pussy. And 20 years old, it's so nice, you know, like, I used to drive downtown, 20 years old, pick up a broad, bring her back to my parents' house, Fuck her either in the backyard with my parents sleeping on, on their lawn furniture. My father's car, because he used to have those big convertibles. Okay. Or do her at her parents' house. That's all I was thinking, where can I fuck her? We had, I had a close friend. He now lives in Ontario also. His name was Grant. And there was these motels on St. Jacques. They were like... Uh, you know, fucking motels. You go there, you pay a few bucks, and you get a room. And he'd go there and use the name David. And I'd go there and use the name Grant. Not knowing, I just figured I gotta use his name. So one day we're both there together, and he says to me, I'm standing beside, and he goes, Grant, and he goes, how'd you know my name? He goes, no, you're Grant. And I go, I go, how'd you know? Go, What's going on? And, we're, we're and he goes, David, and I go, yeah. And he goes, no, it's him. And we found out we were using each other's names. So, go to a motel, bring her back home, or to the club, or wherever, and look for another one. Those days, <clears throat> I just got back from the army. <clears throat> And I used to, used to come into my apartment, there was always three, four girls there all the time. All my friends used to come over to stand in line to get laid. 
it was like. This is when you were 20? 20, 21. It was different. It was a different world there. There was no fear of... The worst thing you could fear was like gonorrhea or syphilis. <coughs> Very pr promiscuous. <coughs> Nobody used condoms. Nobody used condoms. Nobody used condoms then. And the pill was popular, so. Pill started out then, you know. You didn't ask a girl if she was taking the pill. You just say when she told you she was pregnant, you say, I really, that's really not my name and I'm leaving town tomorrow. <laughs> Different world, you know. But um, your topic, kiss them. We're moving up in the seduction. It's easy to kiss them. It comes with the affection. Now, depending how you far far you've gone in the relationship, but if you're not taking them home, okay, if you're not taking them home. That night, go over to them and try to give them a kiss, just for the physical contact, not on, not on their lips, because you, they want you to try to give them a kiss on their lips, because they want to, they want, yeah. What my best thing is, I'd like to give you a kiss goodbye, give me your cheek. I would initiate, you know, you know I'd take, like, initiate where I want. I, I don't want to try to get them, you know. Okay, that's what I want to know. So I'm, and if they say, well, you don't want to kiss I go, no, I'm too good a kisser and I don't want to turn you on just by kissing you. See, everything is positive with me. Hmm. Kissing is important. I always stress how good a kisser I am. But sometimes I could just sit and kiss somebody all night. I don't have to have an orgasm. If you really put me to the test, I think that's almost a lie. That's a damn good line, you know. I could kiss all night, yeah. But do you, when you sometimes, I mean, you encounter resistance at a certain point. I mean, I've encountered it a couple of times over the year, and the funny thing is I've overcome the resistance in different ways, sometimes completely different ways, just using my intuition, and it worked. Yeah, but you know what, like I say, don't worry about the resistance. If they're giving you resistance, most of the time they're testing you. Yeah. You know, they're testing you, so ignore it. Remember, the key rule here is if they say no, it's no. It's you don't want to come off like you're trying to force them for anything. You don't want to come off like you're, you know, a lech. I could imagine myself saying something like, um, "Cause following your, your rules, I've been seeing this woman a couple of times, and I kept thinking, I'm going to do what I want. When the time comes, if I want to kiss her, I will. And the funny thing is, she kept doing things that were turning me off, not physically, but just things she was saying. She wasn't trancing out, she wasn't like slowing down. So I just realized, I let her go. I actually took her to the door and said, hey, it's been nice, but I gotta get up early tomorrow. She was so shocked, you know? They're like, yeah, it was it's really cool. She was shocked. You don't have to kiss her, you're not gonna, you know? No, that's it. And the cool thing is that yesterday the relationship was much different because I spent the evening, she took me to a party, spent the whole evening with two of her best friends. And I got such great rapport that the other, the, those two are now very interested in me. So she was really friendly to me by the end of the evening. She was, you know, she wasn't why I wasn't paying attention. So I decided that the next time I'm with her, there's a good chance I'm going to want to kiss her, and I'm going to and I'm going to go for it. And, and I think that it's going to be easy for me to be honest and say, hey, you know, I really, really want to kiss you, whatever. And just uh, you see, again, seducing them and kissing them, it's easy. But you guys, I, I'll tell you from from what I see here today, you're not ready for that. You're ready. You, you need to practice on the approach. You know, like I have here. Bring them home. Now it depends. Bringing them home is the closing part. Now, if I give you all this advice and you take it all, 
you might not be able to go through the whole thing in one one motion one night and you didn't fail by doing that you have to hone your skills whatever you got to do you got to practice and try because once you start getting successful as as the couple of the fellows here have gotten successful you're one Ryan's one you start to feel a little more confident you start to not think as hard or what are they thinking it frees you to concentrate on other things if you think you're gonna tell them oh, oh you're good looking I'd like to fuck you come home with me right now it's a tough call you need to you need to start that's why I say do a little homework rent that movie watch that and take a look when you start decide to start going out start really wanting to practice jerk off before you go out yeah. don't get too horny you know I know I've, I've gotten out too and I'm so fucking horny <laughs> that I'm bursting I gotta grab the first girl I, I would you know and you start talking to the first one you know you and you think to yourself I'm wasting my time with this one let me go over after that one is better looking over there but I'm gonna because eh, I'm so horny <laughs> eh, eh. and the next thing you know you don't got nobody and you're going ah what did I do <laughs> so sometimes you go in there if you don't if you don't start getting if it's not progressive it's not good go to the next one say hey it's not and there's nothing wrong with saying there after you start talking to her it's going mediocre you go you know what I'm really way too horny to continue this with you tonight I gotta find something I gotta do tonight so I'm gonna be back don't take it as an insult you're a very attractive lady and you did turn me on first but I'll be back go to the next one go to the next just that staying power that control that she thinks you have it's gonna impress her you can't get every single one you can okay but how much time do you have do you wanna you're here in Montreal you're not here for a month you're here for a day or two or a night or one night or three nights or four nights you want to get laid at least the second night you're in town you're going to start talking to a girl she's going to give you a whole cock of the you're going to say well call me tomorrow fuck I'm going I'm leaving day after tomorrow what am I wasting my time with her for go to the next one not saying that you wouldn't have got her but you don't don't flog a dead horse if you see you can go further go to the next one you were my first choice but I have to tell you I'm in a strange city and I need to be close to somebody tonight I need to feel the warmth from another human being goodbye if she calls you back you're doing well if she doesn't you didn't lose anything you're not wasting your time sometimes you spend some time with a girl and it, it wasted all that time you buy her a bunch of drinks wasted all that time yeah I believe I can make practically any broad I meet because one way or another I'm gonna I'm gonna spin a fantasy in their mind for them they'll start to believe the illusions that I make out to but I've got a lot of experience and you can't be me and you can't know what to use I'm gonna try every single thing in my power and I can and I'm relentless you guys have to get over a couple of things that I've gotten over a long time ago so don't try to copy me exactly I'd rather you get a sure thing then chase after that fish that you're not gonna get it's like we we talked about fishing you don't go fishing in an area where there's not a lot of fish okay it might be cheating to go to an area you guy drop his hook and you pick up a fish bzz, right away you might be better off doing that it might not be as exciting you know but at least you know you're gonna go home with some fish it's like those big fishing trips they do for when they when they people go salmon fishing you know it's great fishing trips but they guarantee you a salmon if you don't get one on your line because there's so many around they'll give you one to take home when you're spending gazillion dollars fishing trip well this is the same kind of thing 
you're not going to go and say to the guy, where are there no fish in the lake? I'm going there to fish. Or I want two lone fish. Or where is there a lot of fish? You go fishing there. And if the first fish gives you a lot of trouble, go for the next one. When it's pick, you pick it up and it's too small, unhook it and go for another one. You don't want young ones, eh? You, know, you, you want to be woken up just after you finish fucking and she's in your hotel room and the police say, eh, she's 16, you're under arrest. You don't want to know that kind of shit. So you don't want that. Just like you don't want a girl who's goes home with you to your hotel room, you just walk in the room, somebody kicking down the fucking door because it's her boyfriend she wanted to make jealous and he wants mm -hmm. to kick the shit out of you. They do that. They really do that. Yeah, I mean, you don't want that kind of stuff. You want a nice time. You want to meet somebody. Maybe you want to pursue the relationship. <coughs> the funny thing is, I think a guy sleeping with a girl the first night that he met her can have more respect for her, for, for her if she's the best fuck he's ever had. He'll want to sleep with her again. It won't be a one night stand. Say that to him. Absolutely. Yeah. Because they still under, have, uh, have this ridiculous impression that, you know, we only respect a woman if she holds out for four or five dates. They're still stuck with that. That? I only respect them if they're willing to do threesomes, so it's the next step. <laughs> like I said, when, when it gets to threesomes or twosomes or, you know, like, I went that route too, and that, actually that was a very, that's what changed my life. I got bored after a while. I couldn't do one girl one-on-one -on -one anymore. Doesn't turn you on. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot harder to find two than to find one. When you talk to the, you talk to the two at, at once, do you ever play them off each other? No. no. You don't know, <coughs> you don't know how friendly they are. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. You don't know their relationship. And, to, and a lot of guys try that. They hope to go home with one of them so they're playing the two of them. I find I end up going with none. Mm. Or, okay. okay. I like to, you know. No, I read a posting where a guy play, play them with each other, but the goal was to get a threesome. And according to him, it worked. And it's, 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 Look, it's, uh, it made them compete with each other. I found the easiest way to get a threesome is when the girl you're with picks up the other girl. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what most guys say. That's the best, and it's faster and easier. You don't have to do so much work, too. Because women, if they're interested in another woman, they both know about it very fast. I remember I was driving down and I was with that really attractive girl, the one that was Miss Montreal, and there was this girl hitchhiking and she, we drove by her and she gave a real big smile. We drove by and I said, look at the smile she gave me. And she goes, why do you think it was you? I stopped that fucking car so fast. I said, go find out. Okay, but that's the reality, you know, hey, I was taking things for, for granted. And when they, and you know what, after you've slept with a girl and you get intimate with them, there's nothing you can't talk about. That's true. And that's the same thing when they start asking you questions, you tell them, after I sleep with you, there's nothing we can't talk about. Once you get past that inhibitions and the sexual, um, Exactly. Good. Thank you. Who said that? Wonderful. I love that kid. <laughs> exactly. Once you get over that anxiety, it's smooth sailing. You can talk to him like he likes to tell him, hey, you got to do threesomes. Okay. Maybe they're humoring him, but they're not throwing him out. No. You so let him humor him. I went out with a girl. She had 
the nicest ass I was telling you, you know. Uh, she says, no guy's ever going to do it in my ass. And that's, I think that's what turned me on, to be honest with you. When she said to me, no guy's going to put it in my ass, that's all I thought about. <laughs> that's it. She ruined me. That's all I thought about. Day and night. How do I do it? What do I try? I'll try that one. And I tried. I was relentless. I couldn't. That's it. Don't do that to me. Don't say those things. It all depends what turns you on and when it turns you on and on what stage it turns you on. Okay, let me go back to a little bit of my list here. Like I said, bringing them home in threesomes, I think we got the problem is I don't have the confidence, I don't know what to say, how to keep the conversation going, and overcome fear of rejection. These, for, I'm assuming, would be the most important things for you guys right now. I don't have the confidence, I don't know what to say, now, like I said, confidence, it's going to come to you easily when you figure out what to say. And I don't know what to say is, again, I don't know what to say to them. I don't know what I'm going to say to them next. I don't know who I'm going to talk to. But I know one thing for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, she's going to lead me to what I have to talk about. See, I'm so confident that... Now, if you guys start saying that, you're going to know who you're going to talk to, who you're going <coughs> to... You don't know it. You don't feel it like I do. I've lived it. I lived it today at lunch. You understand? I use what she's feeling, what I'm observing. Once you get past that, when you, when you, when you feel, you won't have a problem on what to say to them and how to talk to them. You won't have a problem. Because, first of all, we're not asking you to go fight the Taliban in another country to want to kill you. We're not telling you that if you're not successful, we'll find your body someplace and we'll send you back to your parents. We're telling you if you're successful, you're going to have a hell of a lot of fun. Might make you better workers, might not. It's irrelevant. But you're going to have the part of life that is worth living. They say rich or poor has no difference how well you can enjoy sex. Mind you, when you're rich, you can buy any bitch you want. That's the reality. The, 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 the starts like this. Rock stars, millionaires, they get what they want because I still in a way in my heart still believe every woman is a hooker they want to hook a guy they have more than just sex on their mind how to keep a conversation going honesty Honesty doesn't mean you have to tell them everything. You have to, you know, you're a spy and you got to tell them all the secrets of the country and get hung after. No. Honesty means if you're something you don't feel comfortable telling them, say there's something I don't feel comfortable telling you. By doing that, you'll find they get a respect for you because no guy is doing that. And you know by the questions they ask you, you know what they want to hear for the answer. You're not children. You're not five years old. You've all been there before, even the 20 year old guys. The girl asks them questions, they know what they're leading on to. Do you only want me for sex? Yeah. No, oh no. Oh no, no, no. That's the last thing I was thinking about. The absolute last. First, I wanted to know if you want to be Madame Curie and discover penicillin all over again. <laughs> <laughs> 
then I want to know if you want to be the one that carried the flag in the States. What's your name that uh, sold the flag? Uh, uh, Betty, 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 Betty Rock. Okay. And then, if you're really good, I'll let you be Joan of Arc and we'll burn the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you guys? You know what I mean? Reality's there. The conversation, say what, be outrageous. Tell me, like you more. Cocky and funny. I want to tell you something. I once had a secretary working for me. She was huge. Huge. I couldn't give her a lift home. She could never have gotten in my car. Oh my God. <laughs> my secretary went away for a while. I hired a temp. She was a very good secretary, but she was huge. My dad came over to my office and I said, come, we'll go for lunch. So she had ordered an extra large pizza and put it on her desk, an extra large. So my dad thought I had ordered lunch in, so he went to get a slice and she yelled at him, it's mine. She ate a whole extra large pizza by herself at lunch. So at night I said to my dad, I said, maybe I'll take the small truck home tonight. I'll give her a lift because I could only get her in the, the suburb and I couldn't get her in my car. So I go to her and I say, can I offer you a lift home? The last thing I would have thought in my life that she has a boyfriend. She says, no, my boyfriend's coming to get me. <laughs> oh, 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 you have a boyfriend? And yeah, she had a good looking boyfriend. He liked her. My father-in-law has a good saying. It's a European saying. And he says, there's a top for every pot. Mm -hmm. What he liked, this guy I didn't like. I'll tell you one in the next in the next book or the next. I'll tell you the story about me with a fat broad. It's a whole. I tried everything. Are we? What's that? Keep waiting for it. Oh. Okay. And the key to all this is we're all sensitive and afraid of being rejected. We're afraid of them telling us, I don't like you, you're too fat, you're too black, you're too white. You're too pink, you're too green, you're too short, you're too skinny. It's bullshit. Doesn't mean anything. Okay? Clifford sends me this thing in the mail about this um, where you, you go on the computer and you, 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 you put a profile on and you get dates and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I put on a profile. And, I'm, I'm, and these women, and all I did was honest, my, my MO, honesty, trust, and respect, and I want kinky sex and all, you know, everything but, uh, you know, they, I didn't want the gay sex, and I, you know. I get every couple of days on my email comes in, I start laughing. And I look at these women, they, and they, they give pictures of themselves, good looking women, and you read what they look. Most of them say any kind of guy big, skinny, some say slim, some say tall, but the majority, I would say 80% or more, <clears throat> they don't care. They want a guy. Wild sex. They're married. Uh, um, what's that one when they, uh, discreet. Mm -hmm. yes. You know when it says discreet, that somebody's uh, got a relationship going, they're cheating on their husband or something. And it doesn't stop coming in. Women are very horny out there. Now there's a, there's a lot of different kinds of women. A lot of women who don't get horny. 
lot of women. I would say, now I found this statistic hard to believe when I was younger, but as I got older, I started believing it more. They say that over 80% of the women never achieve an orgasm. And that a lot of women fake it just to make the guy feel good. I can live with that. I don't care. I can't control them. If you think you're going to be Mr. Stud, the best guy in the world, you're living an illusion. You might make one woman feel fantastic and the other woman don't even turn her on. They say sex is 80% mental, 20% physical. It's our own fantasies. They say with the woman, it's 90% mental and 10% physical. I went out with one girl. She was 32 years old. I mean, I think somebody here knows the story already. We get in bed, we're having a great time. She says to me, I just want to tell you something. I'm giving you something very special tonight. I go, yeah. I'm giving just as much as no, but I'm a virgin. Oh, I got up and I got dressed and I got the fuck out of there. She's, why? What's wrong with? I go, you think it's worth so much and you've been saving it so long? Give it to somebody else. I'm not worthy of it. It's a big responsibility. They think it's worth so much. 32 years old. I, I had a couple of Klingons come after me. I was stalked by these prods. Yeah, you got, you know, so the old story, be careful what you wish for. You might get it. You have to be careful. They're, they're all not dealing with you on the same level ground you are. There's a lot more ulterior motives that they want. There's a lot of pressure with women I would say after 25 to 30, that age group in their 30, maybe 35, I don't know, if they're not married, a lot of their friends and family go, what's wrong with you? Hey, you're not married, you're 27 and you're not married, or you're 31, what's wrong with you? You know? So now, those women are on the prowl, you know? Like with the, the Y stick looking for water. Single guy, single guy. <laughs> Take him, don't matter. And I could do an experiment in here, you'd probably all like it. Get a, get a medium broad in here and grab each one of your dicks and no, I'd like to see the guy who didn't get a hard on. Just proves one thing. Guys are pigs. <laughs> you think dirty for a second, you'll get a hard on. So I got some fabulous stuff, and I'm only going to tell you guys this, but you name your penis. Girls all name their breasts. Yeah. I know I had the best name for my penis. I named him better. <laughs> I could teach girls how to kiss better. <laughs> how to suck better. How to fuck better. How to eat better. How to drink better. Mm. Want to play better? It's the illusion you give out. The girl would ask me, how good are you in bed? And I'd go, you're making a mistake to ask me for my recommendation. <laughs> the best! <laughs> well, oh no, I'm really not fucking good. Well, who's gonna say that? 
Like you, you go to say that though, doesn't it? Don't you, you go to a restaurant food? and you say, "What's really good here on the menu?" She should say everything, which means fuck you. You saw what I said today. If I was your boyfriend, who you really liked, mm -hmm. what would you want me to eat here? What would you recommend for me to eat here? Mm -hmm. She chose two things, I think. Hey, eh? yeah, I had one of them. And it was very. You had it too, didn't you? It was very good, wasn't it? What's good here? What would you say? You work in a restaurant. Everything. Not nah, shit here. Go try right across the street. It's really good. Order. Who's gonna say that? But people walk in all the time. Well, what's good here? You're not gonna get the real answer. So quiet in here now. Listen, I'll ask you a question. You have a girlfriend, let's say, right? You're really happy with her. You're not building a harem like I was, okay? Because when they asked me if I had a girlfriend, I said, Yeah, why are you doing out? I'm building my hair and what do you want? They never believe me. Okay? But you have a girlfriend, you're happy with her. You're not gonna be out looking for another girl. Ordinarily. You'll wait till that relationship's over. I did that too when I was younger. You'd have one girl, you'd spend a lot of time with her. Between school or just starting to work, you don't have that much time to start hunting pussy <coughs> as your main hobby. So you have, you have, you, if she's out, she's telling you she has a boyfriend, say, fine, I got an ex-girlfriend to do, do some too. What are you, who the fuck cares? And is it true? Are you sure it's true? Are you sure it's true? Is that not a line that if you were a girl and you didn't want to be bothered by this guy or you wanted to see if this guy would be persistent or you wanted, I have I can answer you very easily. I don't want to insult you because if I insult you, it's like you've been here all day and you didn't listen to anything I told you. I'm only going to tell you this. <laughs> what does that mean? Number one, right? Again, you're listening to what they say. You got a boyfriend, okay. So oh, fine. Yeah, but you're trying to think of what they're going to say. But that's what I'm saying to you. you gotta, that's the first thing you got to forget. And it's the first thing you remember. <clears throat> that's where the tough time comes in. I'm giving you the answer that, I would, that, that Clifford doesn't have the luxury of getting. Him, I usually tell, shut up, number one, fuck off. <laughs> Okay, you, I'm giving the answer because, you know, I'm giving you a break here. <laughs> it all comes back, like I said at the beginning, it all comes back to number one. Don't listen to what they say. You know, you, every time you're having problems, what happens? You're listening to what they're saying. If you listen to what they say, you're going to have problems. You got to go, it's, I didn't give you ten rules. See, sometimes I think if I make up ten rules, It'll be easier. Well, I only forgot one rule. You got two rules, <laughs> and you're forgetting one rule. Hey, give me a break here. If you were in school, and these guys know, if you were in university, what would your professor tell you? Yo, you guys are in deep shit. You can only, you, you can only get 50%, no matter how hard you try. So you suggest that he ignores our thing about the you are going to answer like Clifford in a minute. <laughs> You've heard it enough times too. 
No, I'm answering the same thing he's asking. You see, you, you, you're making, he's listening to what they're saying. Who cares? They say they have a boyfriend. Who gives a shit? Why are they out in a bar if they're in a bar having a boyfriend? If they're in the street and you start talking to the girl, she says, oh, I'm sorry, I got a boyfriend. Okay, okay. she's got a boyfriend. Go by. It depends where. I'm not saying, no, she's lying to you. But I'm saying it depends the situation. I understood, as you said, if you're in a club or you're in that kind of situation, she says, oh, I have a boyfriend. Are they telling the truth? I don't know if they're telling the truth. I don't want to give them the benefit of the doubt because they shouldn't be there if they have a boyfriend. Right? Or, should be there with them or, something. or they ain't that happy with their boyfriend if they're there. So what are they telling me? I'll fuck you if you're better than my boyfriend? Ask him. Are you telling me you're gonna, you'll fuck me if I'm better than your boyfriend? I am. But, he, but that's, that's what I'm saying to you. You, you. You're listening to what they say gets you in trouble. Continue with what you know what you gotta do. Don't listen to what they're saying. You're not going to benefit from it. They know not to listen to what you're saying. <coughs> Let her make that choice. Just keep doing your thing. If you could get their number, okay, and then say you're running a survey, you want to know, and you would ask her 20 questions. You write down the 20 questions. The next day when you speak to her again, ask her, what you answered for all those 20 questions, she won't get one right. Because she didn't care what you said. You think they listen to what you say? I'm the only one who listens to what you say. I'm telling you, don't say it. They don't care what you say. They're brought up and trained like that. If you had a daughter, what would you tell her? She's going out with guys. Don't listen to what they guys tell you. They'll tell you anything to get you in bed. What, you've never heard that one before? You wouldn't tell your sister, your daughter, your... <coughs> hey? Cool. How old's your mother? Still alive? Yes, I don't know how old Is your father still alive? Okay, let's say your parents... You lost your father and your mother wanted to start dating and she came to you and said, I'm going to start dating again. I need to have a man for... What would you tell her? Be careful what they tell you. Right. It's the first thing you tell her. Right. True. So... I can't tell you to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you tell... So you, and you're worried about what they're going to tell you. They know not I to listen that. to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see what you mean. Yeah, it's you understand what I'm saying? Thousand, I'm not saying... It's only a one-sided thing, you know? You guys, you were the guys, and I'm talking to the guys right now. And I'm, that's what I said to Clifford. He gets me on one of these shows, Oprah and all this, and they want to take me apart because I'm taking only the men's point of view. I'm not saying it's only the men's point of view. I'm saying, you guys want women. Here's what I say to try to get women. They're trained, and they're better trained than you guys are. And that, you guys know. Hey, would you, all of you are going to agree. They got better training than all you guys got. They can manipulate and get what they want easily. Here, I'm trying to give you the training. Training back. You're in flight school, you know? You're gonna go on a sortie. You're gonna go on a mission. You don't realize what the enemy is. You wanna be shot down? You'll be shot down, you for sure. <laughs> I hate flying on your plane, that's for sure. It's down already. You won't get off the ground. You're ready, oh, a plane's coming. Wait a second, I'm not flying yet, don't shoot. You're, you're already dead before you even start. You're, you're, you're trying to think about, well, the ones I don't like like me and the ones I like don't like me and I don't know what to do. I think we make it so overly complicated. Um, yeah, it, that's what I'm trying to say to you. Yesterday I had a great success because I decided, I had a lot of information, I went through a couple of 
things I was going to try. Then I got, might start to overload my brain and then I said, okay, that's enough. That's way too much. I'm just going to keep it simple. And then the evening went very well just because of that. I kept it very, very simple. Yeah. Simple. It's not complicated. That's why I said I give you two rules. You can't listen to what they're saying. Go with what your agenda is. You're not going to have a problem. You're presuming because you're listening to what they're saying. What if she says she's got a boyfriend? So just ignore it and just keep talking. Depends what, depends the mood you're in. Mm -hmm. I might tell her, you know, I didn't tell you, but he told me to come pick you up. I think you're finished with him. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? You know, boyfriends depends. If, she, if, she hit, if they'd hit me with that line, they'd get hit with lines back. I don't, you know. Gonna play stupid games? I can play stupid games. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I was, was, uh, What's his name, your boyfriend? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that was him who talked to me. That's right. But he told me you don't like to get eaten. <laughs> and maybe, maybe he hasn't done it right. I would put her off right away, like that. Okay? Take the initiative. Well, you know, let, let, how can she win with me? I'll tell you, she ain't gonna win with me. I don't care what she says. Like I said, if you, you know what? It's like you play dodgeball, you know, you're there. Tennis, you're waiting for the ball, or you're waiting for the ball. You're waiting for the ball like that, you're gonna get a punked in the head. When you're looking at the ball, you're ready for it. Chunk, boom, missed you. Same thing, I got a boyfriend. Hey, that's too bad. Are you cheating on him or you just want to cheat on him? You know what? <laughs> <coughs> oh, I wouldn't cheat on a boyfriend. Well, you started already. You, I've had sex with you. No, I haven't. Oh, not in my mind. <laughs> Look the way you're dressed. You know, there's a, I would, there's a thousand ways for me to dissipate it. I, like I say, I hope for their sake they don't come up with those kind of lines on me. They usually don't. So I don't get that kind of stuff when I talk to women, as you saw at lunch. If she could have said to me, I'm married, I have a husband, I have a boyfriend. It's, a, it's easy stop. If you meant stop, say stop. You don't need to tell me you have a boyfriend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Again, you don't want to play those games. You come back to the basics. You come yeah. back to what you say your MO is. Stick to it. It's not hard. Stick to it. You like to have structure? I don't play games. You have a boyfriend, why are you talking to me? See, you're the typical kind of girl that says she doesn't play games and you're playing games. Bye bye She's gonna feel like an idiot. Honesty, trust, and respect. How honest could she be if she's got a boyfriend? When did she tell you she had a boyfriend? At the beginning? Okay. Does that mean stop? Because if it really means stop, you just could have said stop to me. I respect people. Yeah, different imp impression. If she's with a friend, her friend's going to listen to that and say, well, you know, I like this guy already. Maybe she's just saying that. I usually hear it after she agrees to go out on a date, and then she'll say, so she'll drop, oh, and my boyfriend does such and such, whatever. Oh. So it's an obvious, like, mind game. I'm just trying to think of what's a good spin to really get tra do the entrapment thing. That's, that's kind of weird. See, if they bring in the boyfriend, there's so many things you can do, depending how you want to shock her, you want to, you know, does he like to watch? Oh, <laughs> 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 oh. I don't, you know what? Like I say, I'm relentless. I go after my goal. I don't give a shit. She had a boyfriend after she's agreed to go on a date with me. Well, then I know she's a slut. <laughs> I promise I won't call him up. Make you feel better? <laughs> I don't kiss and tell. You know, there's a hundred ways. You listen to, the, listen to the line she's giving you and listen to the context you're having the conversation with. And yeah. Okay. I guess you don't play games and you are honest with everybody. 
I mean, listen to what, you know, if you, if you bring down the ground rules, like I said, honesty, trust, and respect. You, you go back to, you really don't care what they say. They could say that to put you off just to give you a test. See, a lot of times when I used to tell them, uh, I want to see my kids, I had a lot of toys in the old days. I had motorcycles and sports cars and, you know, boat and stuff like that. So sometimes I take them to my garage and show them my cars and these are my kids. Oh. Take them for drive. Come, I want to introduce you to my kids. That's what I would do them off they'd, 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 they'd like be not knowing how to handle it and that's what you want to do you want to be different you don't want to lie and look a boyfriend is a boyfriend <clears throat> presume that they're saying a boyfriend like she's a girl and she's your friend but remember Never agree to be friends. Yeah, that's an interesting rule. Yeah. <clears throat> I sometimes tell them my spectrum of friends is full right now and I don't have room for anybody else and I take friendship too seriously. To have a good friend, you have to be a good friend. I don't know if you can be a good friend. I know you'll have a good friend. That's my best line on friends when they say friends. So, my spectrum of friends is full. They can't be your friend. Someone mentioned something about flaking at the beginning. About what? Flaking. Well, yeah, I did. You did that. Uh, about? Flaking. Flaking. You know, not, flaking not returning phone calls, not showing up at the date. <laughs> Dump it. You know what? If they're doing that to you, they're being disrespectful. You don't want that. And you, like I said, you, it's the same thing with the poking of the pencil. Yeah. yeah. They do it once, they'll do it twice. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's an interesting statistic that you hear a lot. <clears throat> Women that have been abused by men end up going back for more and more and more. Mm, all the time. Okay? And it's never once it's never once that they're abused. It's a, you set a precedence. If I had a daughter and her husband whacked her out once, it would be the only time. If she goes back, she's going to go back once, twice, three times, four times. She'll keep going back. There will be no stopping it. So when you were really young, when you started off this game, approaching a lot of women, what was it like? Because I figured that's the stage in which I am in right now. Even though I have no problem approaching women, I, I just stall sometimes, can't follow through with uh, the thing. I can get their attention, it goes very well at the beginning. But just the final stages when I can't, I can't seem to close it very well. So it's hit and miss. Sometimes it's okay, sometimes it isn't. You just think I need more practice, do it more often. See, I don't know what kind of particular problems you're having and why, why are you having these problems. You should be able to, um, maybe, you're, maybe you're, you're, you're not leading them to the right conclusions. Maybe you're just, you know, maybe you're just being their friend. You don't want to be their friend. Maybe you're, you know, like, how many dates you go out with them? You got to set a set of rules. You got to you, you want it. You, you want parameters. You want to set it. Okay. And it doesn't matter to tell them, hey. There's only three strikes. If you don't go with them, you don't sleep with them. The, the first and second date, it's over. 
You're gonna go to the third date and tell and if you don't, if you feel that it ain't gonna happen, say can't call up and cancel. Say, you know what, I feel this isn't going where I want it to go, and I'm gonna cancel the date. What about just the, the pickup aspect? What's that? What about just approaching and picking up? Approaching him and like what is the best way to close it, does it? I've been thinking about different structures to use. Yeah, you see, you have to understand that the more you don't allude to sex, the harder it is to close. Yeah, that's true. If you try to be, um, buddy, buddy. yeah, or or you try to be uh, the Pope, you know, or Father Johnson, it's harder to close. You're saying a lot of sexual... Oh, uh, yeah, because that's what you want. You know, listen, you, you ain't going to go get plumbing parts in, a, in an ice cream store. You know, you talk about sex because that's what you want. You allude to it because that's what you want. You look at them, you, you intimidate them, you uh, fantasize with them, about them. You let them know what you think and what you want. What do you mean by intimidate them? Let them know that you're in control? Yeah, you have to have control. And to get control, you have to make them always you know, look at you and you're looking at them and know what you want. So you have to get in those conversations when they say, I know what you want, and go, thank God. Okay? <laughs> thank God, you're a rocket scientist. You know what I want. That was real hard to figure out. I wouldn't be on the third date if I wouldn't, uh, by the third date, you know, I'll tell you, the, the only time I ever broke that rule on three dates, no sex, was my current wife, okay? On the third date, there was no sex, I said, goodbye. She says, are you going to see me again? I go, no. She said, is that because of your rule? I go, yeah. She says, you're really going to take a ch I go, goodbye. I left. She chased after me down the street. She almost dragged me out of my car back to her house to fuck her that night. Because she knew that it wouldn't have been that night. It would have been never. I wouldn't have talked to her again. I wouldn't have wasted my time. And I definitely believe, as happy as I am with her and my family, that there would have been another one, just as good or just the same or whatever, because I created what I want. Yeah, that's a fantastic line, sir. You got to give yourself the parameters. You said you want the parameters. You're not going to talk about fishing and, and uh, Mount Kilimanjaro and what the weather's like if you want to fuck this broad. She's getting dressed up. You're losing the whole context of everything. She's getting dressed up to make herself as sexy and good-looking as possible. What, what is that? She wants to discuss the world events with you. That's a good point. So on that topic... Yeah, you tell them, you know, you look fantastic. You turn me on. That's why I say when you look at them, if she turned you on that you approached her, tell her why. What's in your mind? When I say what you're thinking about is not, should I talk about sex or shouldn't I talk about sex? No, you shouldn't think about that. That's not what you're thinking about. When you saw her, it's like when he says, uh, approach a woman. What do you look, what is she? You know, maybe, maybe I'm going to need some models the next time around. I'm going to get him to say, what are you turned on about? What turns you on with this girl or that girl? If you see what turns you on, yeah, go after it and tell her. Listen, I want to tell you something. Where'd you get a haircut? In Toronto, in Montreal, the States, where? In the States. You go to the same guy all the time or just try to? Try a different place. You like this haircut you got last time? I really like it. Though. You really like it? And if a girl came up to you and said, geez, I like your haircut, would you feel good? I suppose, yes, you complimented me on my choice. Okay. Grow some tits and I'll sure fuck you tonight. 
this is what I'm saying to you. Here. You got a haircut. I picked up your haircut. Okay? You know, hey, I like your jacket. Where'd you get that jacket? Nice jacket. Goth boutique. Yeah, good. Did you, did you choose that by yourself or you had him get it for you? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Try that. You know? I mean, same thing. She got dressed up. She did her hair. She did her nails. I like that nail polish. You must be something special because I don't think there'd be a girl on this planet who'd wear that nail polish. Positive or not, you try to give her a positive reinforcement. She's gutsy. She's good looking. Do you have to wear a bra or your boobs are like that all the time? Wow, that's <laughs> very bold. That's very bold. <laughs> If they're perky with their nipples going up like this, that's the question I'm asking. Can I hang my jacket on one while I play with the other one? <laughs> Have you actually ever asked that? Yeah, what's the difference? What are they going to do? They're going to think you're a pervert? Hello, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's, so that's great. what I tell them. I don't deny anything. I never deny anything they ask me. They say, they accuse me of anything. Are you a pervert? Yes. You heard me say that before. I don't change my M.O. She tried in the restaurant to talk about cooking. I brought it back to sex every time. That's it. That's all I care about. <laughs> That's good. That's Doesn't That's matter. You understand? <clears throat> if she's, you're asking, you're going out with her the third time and she doesn't think you want her for sex. And how are you going to approach it? You shouldn't have a problem closing. I would tell her the second date. You know, this is the second date. If I don't make it tonight, you only have one more chance. Wow. Why not? What are you playing games with? What do you have? 50 years? You don't have time to fuck around with this shit. You know, you're out. You're, you know, in a city like Montreal, if I came into a city like Montreal, I don't got time to, to wait to see if I get one two days later. Yeah. Good point. Give me your room number. I'm knocking on the door. I'm not calling her on the phone. Can I come over? I'm there. I don't ask her for the phone number. That's where she works. I know she'll be there tomorrow at that time. What time do you finish tomorrow night? <laughs> Great, let me take you out for supper. Or maybe I'll come eat there and we'll leave right after I finish. <laughs> All depends on the mood you're in. You've got to control, and you've got to be honest what you want. What does he want from me? You know, these guys go to school together and if one guy wants some homework done or help with something, he doesn't go in and start talking about his grandmother for two hours. He says, hey, give me, can you help me with this and get it done? He's going to say yes or no. If he says no, he'll go to another friend to ask him for help. As we get older, we forget to do that shit. Oh, I, I, I don't know how, how to approach them. I learned a long time ago. Don't ask him to approach her or him. Go do it yourself. You'll get your right answer right away. Yes or no. Are you interested in me sexually? No. You have a friend? <laughs> that's all go on with it what do you need him for you got an itchy back buy a back scratcher for a dollar <clears throat> you want a fabulous cook ask her to bring a resume you, gonna, you meet somebody it's visual first Regrettably, that's visual for she turned you on. Why? There's a thousand women out there, millions, gazillions, will turn you on and not him. What Clifford might like, you don't like. You don't go into a bar and every guy's killing each other for one girl. <coughs> Lots of women there. You go to a supermarket, you can look at the basket and see if they're single just by what they're buying. It's very easy. 
it's a good place. I used to pick up a lot of women in a supermarket because you could see right what they're buying. Walk around with a case of condoms in your, ba in your basket. <laughs> Cucumbers and condoms. <laughs> Looking for a date tonight. You know, you got any friends? <laughs> You got to, you got to, like I say, you got you to gotta tell them what you want. I mean, on the third date, let me ask you, you really think on the third date a woman doesn't know that you're hanging around for pussy? She's that pure. I remember, I said to my father once, I said to him, this was really funny because my dad was more of a prude than I was, okay? I said to him once, oh, she's not that kind of girl. He goes, what? And then when I got back, I took her to New York with me. When I got back, she had her head underneath the steering wheel all the way back from New York. I said to my dad, you know, it was funny. I didn't think she was that kind of girl, but she was. Yeah, I wised up too. I was there too. I was closer to their age. I thought there were some girls who were just so pure, mm -hmm. angelic. They were the worst sluts. <coughs> any boy? Any more questions? Anything you need to? It's up to you. And it's a funny thing. <clears throat> when I started fucking the girls in high school, there wasn't many guys who would be fucking them. The girls were my best leads. None of the guys knew what I was doing. It was the girls. Hmm. But that's what started me on the hunt. And it's not easy. That was still a social circle, right? Not a real hunt to go out and picking up. It's a social circle. It's not, you, you can't go pick up when you're 13, 14, 15 years old. Yeah, in high school it was too. It was it, it, at 16 and 17, beating girls, you know, you're fucking around with them for months and you're not getting the first base with them. And then you hear if one is really loose and you try to go after her. You know, anybody that would even sound like they had a bad reputation, she's mine. You know? <clears throat> That's the way it starts. And then, at 17, it was getting harder, not easier, harder. So I started to realize it's not there that I'm going to get the women I want. It's out here. Mm -hmm. So I started going to Belmont Park. And those girls... Oh, <clears throat> I started working at a gas station when I was 17. And the guy at the gas station a French Canadian fellow and he says come to my house tonight we're having a little bit of a party he just had gotten married he was a, little, he was a mechanic there he was older so I go there and sex sexuality was very open it's the, it's the French Canadian way it's a lot more open a lot more exposed it's not as it's not as tight ass as it is in Ontario you know it's and I see his wife's sisters hot 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 so I tell him many introduce me to her says, just go over and talk to her. she likes you my wife told me your sister likes you <clears throat> so I start talking to her I start going out with her okay I take her out I go to pick her up the second time I'm taking her out She's coming to my room, let's fuck. 
your father's sitting there on the sofa having a beer watching a hockey game your mother's in there in the doing some laundry or something and you want me to go in there and fuck you with your parents right here are you crazy she goes what the fuck's wrong with you like what's what inhibitions do i have i said no no let's go we'll go to a motel you know we'll go we'll go to saint jacques and, other, and not only that she lived on the lormier so to go to St. Jacques is another, like, I did a lot of traveling when I was a kid that I didn't need to do. <laughs> so uh, I'm sitting, standing there in the living room, and her father's there drinking beer, watching a hockey game. And I'm waiting for her to get dressed, and her father looks at me and says, You, you, like, uh, you like my daughter? I go, yeah, yeah. He says, she fucks good, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I fucking must have gone three shades of white. Like, what, what's he? What, I, 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 I like, do I move? Do I breathe? What's he thinking? If I say, yeah, he's going to beat the shit out of me or what, you know? Who the fuck knows? <clears throat> and I'm, st I'm there like, she comes out and says, let's go. And I'm like, I'm, I'm begging her to drag me out of the house. Like, in my mind, I can't say a word. I don't know what to say. I'm like, you didn't get the trap, yeah. So he looks at me, he goes, oh, you're going out? Her mother sucks better than her, she has no teeth. <laughs> that sounds like he did his own daughter, I don't know. No, no, it's the sexuality. Then I got invited, I went out with her for a while because she was hot. We went to a party in their house and the grandmother, okay, is being rubbed up by the priest, the local priest in the area. And I'm going, what the fuck is going on here? And they're all laughing at me because I'm like, I'm like this prude. <clears throat> and the, the grandmother says to me, says, go into my bedroom, listen to this, and get me the Virgin Mary from my bureau. Now, I'm Jewish, I don't know too much about Virgin Mary and stuff like this, and I was 17 years old at the time. What the fuck is going on? I go in there. I see there's one Virgin Mary. So I pick it up, okay, on the bureau, and I'm bringing it into the living room. They're all laughing hysterically. You see, because one side was a Virgin Mary, the other side was a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're making a joke because I'm so naive, and they tell me the priest and her, that's his girlfriend, his, her grandmother. Sex, sexuality is very open with French. You're French Canadian, yeah, part. Old, part yeah, you know it. I just hang around. A we lot. used to watch. When we were younger here, there'd be like, we used to call them fins. And I'll tell you, you're going to like this. You know what a fin is? A fin was before you get porno movies on TV when we were younger. You'd get a French-Canadian movie, and they'd show tits yeah, and ass yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. The fins were, we'd watch the movie all night, not understanding a word. And when you see fin at the end, you know you got fucked. Because you never know when the sexy part is coming. Yeah, so you used to say, hey, I watched a fin last oh, night, yeah, dude. I get it, yeah. You understand? Fan, which means end. Yeah, which means end. Fan, which means end. <laughs> so, but we'd, we'd watch the French channels because it was always CBC is CBC. You know CBC all over yeah, Canada. Yeah. Okay? You never saw a tit in CBC. Yeah. And in the French, and the, and the Canadian, so Canadian the French right. CBC, was CBC, but the French version was so much more open. Yeah. Sexuality with French Canadians is much more open. The joie de vivre. The, they don't look at sex. It's not a taboo thing to go and have your, the daughter screw on her boyfriend. It's normal. Our inhibitions are because of Mormons and uh, Baptists. Monarchy. You know, the monarchy. Well, depends which monarchy. The English monarchy. Not really. You see, a lot. Of, that's a that's a lot as as a myth. In England, you should learn about this history. In England, cocktails started, they'd have orgies before the meal. The English were, t were big on sex orgies. That's what cocktails started. And purse, if you notice, on a ship, the guy who takes care of the money is a purser. And purse was, mainly men wore purses. The women didn't have purses. It changed was a male thing. They would, a purse would be where they carried their money. Mm -hmm. A purser on a ship is still a guy that takes care of the money. Remember, the English were seafaring people yeah. before anybody else. And 
it, the the orgies, the food orgies. You watch sometimes uh, these old uh, English movies, you know, or like, like you know, uh, yeah, swashbucklers yeah. where you see them gorging themselves with, you know, and all the women dancing. That's what it was. They had a lot of orgies. Mm -hmm. The Romans too had orgies. That's what it was all about. I mean, what do you think? We're only we're only sexually perverted now. It's Sodom and Gomorrah. They were saying it was too perverted in those days. You have to understand it's it's how you perceive it. In our society here, in in Montreal, it's easier to pick up a French Canadian girl than anywhere else in Canada because they don't they feel they're picking you up. You know, they, and they, they love sex and they like to, you know, it's not just such a taboo thing. It's like, that's why you come to Montreal, <laughs> it's got to be the greatest city. It's easier to get two girls here to, to, to do it than anywhere else practically. Yeah. But it's, it should be no different. Yeah, certain, certain cities and certain things, it's, look, in Dallas, I put an ad in the paper. Before I put an ad in the paper, I went to one of these social clubs where you swap. Okay? So when I went there, they said there's only one or two nights a week that I could go because I didn't have a partner. So I'm thinking, oh, I see. You see, if you have a partner, you can go there and you can... So I said, okay. So I went one night where I didn't have a partner and met one of these single girls and says, listen, why don't we partner up together? We can come all the time. Oh, great. But then a lot of the couples that came in, I would rather wait for the single night. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of these guys, that was like, that's what struck me as the worst. Most of the guys that came for, that, that were really coupled, enjoyed watching somebody fuck their wife more than anything else. You know? And after a while, I felt like, ooh, you know, get out of here. You know, he's jerking off while I'm fucking his wife. You know, fuck her harder. He's giving instructions. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you know? But it depends what you want to go in for. And like I said, today, I don't know. Today, what happens is guys like me, when the AIDS things came out, they either go two way. They don't give a shit. Or they become like me, and I'd make every fucking girl test herself. You know, I got super paranoid. Had a condom on me all the time. I'm not on me, but on like you know. <laughs> <laughs> but like I got really paranoid with it. it. Was like you know, you know, it's like it's what happened because remember I went from one from one time where it was so open. That, that good friend of mine who's a surgeon, the reason I got friendly with him was because I used to have these big weekends where I have an orgy and I go in there and I tell him, you know what, give me a penicillin shot just in case. I don't know who was there, what was going on. It was so many. I lost track. You know, we didn't wear any condoms at all in those days. So he used to say, and one day he says to me, I can't give you any more penicillin for a while. You're going to have a, a allergic reaction. So we used to joke about that and then he used to say I'm the guy with the most penicillin he's ever given to in his life, you know. And I used to bring up a couple of girls for abortions for him, with him too, you know. So he knew how promiscuous I was. These orgies were organized by you? Set it up? Some. Some. I had some friends that uh, set some up too. and. Everything you see, I've, I've, I've lived every fantasy. I even made my own, my own, uh, well, not, I didn't make a porn movie, okay, because wasn't, video cameras in those days weren't really, you know, <coughs> but I took plenty of shots with my still camera on my, t with the timer. Okay. Oh, okay. What happened was when I was going through my divorce, I took so many pictures that when she put, like, M for her initial with my last name they thought it was Mr. and they sent a lot of that because like, in those days you couldn't get film developed here in a photoshop you could only get it done in one of these places one place was in Saskatchewan one right photo labs you know get that stuff in and they sent it to 
her house and the forwarding of the mail. And the divorce cost me a lot more, but that's another oh. story. But I still kept enough to make myself an album for memory, you know, of the world. And I like the pictures of me fucking two broads. I've got plenty of those. And, you know, it's, it's not like, that's like, what Clifford used to come over and you know look at and I have it in my house and said, what happens if your wife doesn't like it I go pardon me it's mine not hers yeah, okay. she wants to look at it she's welcome to it's my life it's part of what I've uh, I've lived into okay. there's about 300 shots missing that my ex-wife got <laughs> well I don't know if she kept them or not it's irrelevant but that's the reality I mean it depends what you want to do and See, I, like I say, I'm going back to Clifford with that friend of his. I'm not saying he doesn't know where he's wrong, but, uh, you know, as you get older, you find out the guys that would brag a lot. It's like the certain people I met in this industry. Some of them I feel, and, and I think I've got a good gut feeling about people. Some of them I feel, yeah, the guy's a player. And the other one I go, this guy ain't getting laid. He's getting laid less than you. She's talking up a good storm. Maybe what he wants to do. So I, I don't think you need a system where you have to follow guidelines. I think basically what you need to find is a way to retrain yourself on only one rule. Mm -hmm. When you stop caring about what they say and I'm not saying it to be derogatory to put women down because when you meet the nice woman you spend a nice time with her I'm not telling you to be rude to her be rough with her to treat her like shit or do no on the contrary I'm saying don't listen to what they say because you don't know if they're being honest yet when you feel they're honest you can change your relationship or adapt it to the way you want if you feel this is going to be the good enough woman to be mother of the children you want or you don't want or it's good enough to add to your harem or it's good enough to become a friend and a friend you can fuck there's nothing wrong with that it's you have to direct what you want I've had all of the above But I know how many have lied to me, how many have told me stupid stories, how many have told me things that aren't true or about their boyfriends, you know. Listen, I heard a guy tell me a story and the second woman that he went out with or one of the women after that, almost the same story. And I told him right away, it's bullshit. And he goes, no, 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 no. Then he finds out I was right. Well, I don't I don't I don't fucking want to hear I was right or I don't want to say I told you so I know I'm right because it's easier to overlook a situation when you're not involved when I'm watching what you do or what you do or what you tell me with the woman it's easy for me to, to, to direct you because I know what you're doing wrong before you start yeah, you can go to advanced stuff. And on advanced stuff, I'm telling you, I got fantastic systems that you'll really score with. But it all depends what you want to do. Advanced stuff is more logistics. You go out with a woman and you want to go out with two of her friends. Look, and I'm not saying I'm always successful. I was going out with this gorgeous girl. Advice like I gave him. I was fucking her and I was fucking two of her sisters. She said to me one day, are you cruising all my sisters? And I said, I'd like to. They're all gorgeous. And she was the best looking bar none. She, was, she won awards for that. But the sister, the other sister was better in bed by, <sighs> was like, Phew. Now I figured, one has brought me a friend for me for my birthday. They both were scoffing my dick and licking my asshole. And the other one is talking up a good storm. She's her sister. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm smart. I are smart. I are smart. <laughs> How about both you two sisters together? I, could, I, I should have put a hand grenade in my pants. <laughs> would have been better. They both, that's it, over. They would both fuck me with another broad, but not the two sisters together was like whoa 
when she found out I was fucking her sister, she says, my sister goes after every one of my boyfriends. I don't know if she, if I fucked her because I was so good or she was just doing what she said, what she was always doing. But I didn't care, I was enjoying it. But then I opened my big fucking stupid mouth and I lost both. And nothing I could do to retrieve it. I tried the apo as soon as I apologized, I got in worse shape. No, that's it, yeah. that's it. I, it's like the harem. Oh, I was I was going good. I had four almost perfect women in the harem. I would I would literally fuck six nights a week with the four of them, and one night for looking for another one in case I'd lose the harem going on. Okay. They'd all cook for me. The relationships cost me nothing, low maintenance. And then Christmas came. So tell us the story, this is good. So I did my standard Christmas cards. <laughs> Best gift, a lotto ticket. Oh, really? Sure, because if you win, you win. If you don't, well, it's a lotto ticket, what's the big deal? Not too much, not too little. That's what I liked. And then what happens? Okay, I got to be with my family Christmas. That works. Not when you're Jewish. <laughs> oh yeah, that's it too. But you convince one or two of them. Yeah, okay, I'll be with one of them Christmas. <laughs> then New Year's. New Year's is heavy. Friends, you can be with your male buddies, no? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, right. You care a lot about me, especially when they know that you said you have other girlfriends. Okay, you see, the honesty part comes to bite you in the ass. Mm -hmm. Who are you going to be with New Year's? Ooh. Me? Oh, I haven't decided yet. That's not good either. <laughs> so what happens New Year's? Usually you lose one at Christmas, you lose one at New Year's, <laughs> and you're lucky if you have one after Valentine's Day. And it's a very close period of time. You can always keep adding new ones to your head. Yeah, but uh, you don't have time at this time of year. You're in, you're in deep shit, you know, you're... <laughs> because Valentine's Day, the ones you're not with on Valentine's doesn't matter what excuse. And I tried going out of town, I tried all that stuff. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Used to come out of, used to come into spring, into around this time of year, and I'd got, maybe I'd have one, or maybe I'd start searching all over again. To rebuild the harem. Rebuild the harem. How about trying something like I was just thinking if that happens to me, something like 